Hari ini kita akan bersama dengan salah seorang penceramah atau speaker dalam perhimpunan berkenaan personaliti yang digelar lelaki terhijau di dunia, Matthias Galber. Hi, thank you for joining us today, Matthias. Thank you, my pleasure. Great to be here. We, we started the discussion before yes, we yes, even supposed yes, to. Right. But let's talk about your first of all. Let's talk about your participation in this uh, gathering of the great minds. And what do you plan to share with the participants? I mean, lots of green things have been talked about out there. Yes, but what yes. do you plan to share with them? First of all, I want to start with my own history, you know, coming from a little village in Germany and when I was a kid I had like uh, four months, three to four months of snow and now the children in the little village, my brother's children, they, if they are lucky, have one week of snow where they can go skiing. So I can see in my little village the reality of climate change. Here in Malaysia, some people tell me, you know, when they were younger they needed blankets, there seems to be a little bit of evidence of warming. I remember a guy from Kuching, he told me when he was young, he was throwing the net into the local river and he had fish in there. Mm -hmm. Now when he throws the net in he gets pl plastic bottles. So there is a change going on in our environment and I want to just uh, uh, present that as, a, as an observation. And the people look in their lives they might see the same. Then what can we do as individuals to make our own life greener, to mm -hmm. make our own environmental impact much lower and then as well how can we use our businesses as vehicles of positive change. Mm -hmm. Often business is destroying natural resources, generating pollution, polluting the water. But we need to turn that round and make businesses positive agents of change in our society mm -hmm. for a more greener and socially just future. You, you've mentioned just now that you, from, from your personal experience mm. when you grew up you had three months of snow, now you had yes. uh, there's just one week of snow. Many people, you know, these are the things that many people can relate to, personal mm. experiences, because I think when you, if you mention about uh, the North Pole I, as layer is thinning, nobody can yes. relate to that. When yes. it happens to you on a personal basis, yes. people can relate to that. Mm. You, will you be sharing that in a more personal basis to these participants? Definitely. I mm. mean, my, my talks are always inspirational talks mm -hmm. where I link it to my own personal story mm -hmm. of that experience from my little village. And even how I grew up, you know, I had this idea that I want to do something for the environment later, but I was just a simple kampung boy. And mm -hmm. my father was a bricklayer who was kind of saying, hey, you know, you can't can't make money with that kind of stuff you know you can't make money with green so I want to encourage other people to live their dreams mm -hmm. and to do something positive and we can even earn a decent money a decent salary or uh, generate a, a positive business that generates value to society and value to us as entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so there are many different opportunities and I'll be sharing my story now you have a company in Germany which produces green building materials right yes yes correct and and, and, and your father mentioned that you can't make money yes. on green stuff, yes. right? And, and yes. the world has changed in that sense. I mean, previously, yes. I think if you talk 20, 30 years back, nobody would you know, pay attention so much to all this green stuff. But now it's mm. become an explosion of ideas and changes and revolutions when it comes yes. to uh, living your life. Yes. And, and what do you make of that? This, this, this uh, very sudden change of, of um, ideas when it comes to green and all that. We have too many people on this planet already and we all want growth. We all want development and that, mm. is, that, is, that is fine. We cannot prevent development. Uh, we need to have sustainable development. Actually the only way how we can save the humans and the assets that the humans have created on this planet is by going radically green. At the mm. moment we're just doing a little bit of green. Now we have a lot of green events. But so there's no space for grace period and, and you, you can't have this grace period in between. You just have to go radical, right? I think uh, the human species in order to survive in the future needs mm. to go radically green because we see all sorts of problems here and there. But I'm not, I don't want to be too much doomsday either. I'm mm -hmm. a very positive guy. I'm a believer in the positive future. Uh -huh. uh, you know, not all of the natural disasters that we have are directly linkable to climate change. There have always been natural fluctuations. There have been uh, natural disasters before we had climate change, but it seems to be accelerating, and I see it in my little village. Mm -hmm. Because we humans, within a short period of time since industrialization, you know, we're taking the resources that this planet has produced over millions of years and in a short period of time we burn it in our cars, we burn it in our factories, we dig out the coal for coal-fired power plants. This is putting pressure on the planet, this is putting pressure on the human species and the planet will survive. The planet has gone through an ice age mm -hmm. but if there is a significant change in temperature our assets, even some in Malaysia, might get flooded and the human species is struggling. Especially the poor people, mm -hmm. they cannot run away from uh, rising water levels and other things. So in order for us to maintain sustainability for our children, we need to go radically green and it pays to go green. If you have a green energy efficient building, 
that is proper building materials, you can save maybe 50% of your electricity bill. 